All right, Bismillah, as I said I would and been requested so many times, we're going to do a stream room setup tour, an official stream room setup tour. This is where it all goes down. This is where everything happens that you see on MGO, that you see in my live streams, you see in my video clips. This is also where we do the coaching sessions. This is also where all my editing editing takes place. So here you go. It's not a very big room, as you can see. This is the, this is the, 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 the full room. It's not a very big room at all. Got my calendar on there to keep me organized. This corner is where all the editing take place takes place with the M1 Mac. This is a beast for editing. Alhamdulillah, with the M1 processor, this thing eats through video, 1080, 4K, whatever you want. That, along with being all my editing, being hooked up to an M.2 drive through USB-C, breezes right through my editing, as you see, editing a video as we speak. In the Pacific Blue, I had an older iMac that we used to edit on. They had the Fusion Drive, and the HDD part of the Fusion Drive started to die. So alhamdulillah, before it died, we were able to get a very good trade-in value and trade up to this M1 iMac. Anyone who likes Macs and you do editing or any type of post-processing, this thing is a beast. So these are all the hats that you see on the stream. They're all stacked up over here. In this corner, this is where everything, this is where all of the streams happen. This is the back camera that you see on stream. This is also my <clears throat> uh, podcast camera. This is a Sony A6400 with a small rig set up on it, cage, and a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. Sigma 16 millimeter lens, very good for the podcast that I do. Uh, we got Darth Vader looking out over here. That's it. We see you, Darth Vader. These are the Jordans that everybody sees on the back of the stream. This is a very nice Udbana I got from Abdul Samad of Qureshi back in the day. Now, this is my vantage point. This is my view. When I sit down in the stream lab, this is what I see. And this is what I need to see to be able to run things efficiently. This is my side monitor, which I monitor Discord. And as you can see, there's an actually a Quran group session happening right now. So lots of things go on over in MGO other than just gaming. And I can also watch the YouTube streams <clears throat> or keep up with my YouTube or have another open page right here. This is simply just a monitor. I'll link the in the description. I will link everything that I use. Uh, it'll all the all the stuff that I use will be linked in the description. This is literally just a Dell. I think it's like a, a Dell uh, 24 something. It's a 24, I think a 24 inch monitor, but it's able to be rotated on this stand that it comes with. So it's able to be rotated to be in the portrait mode because that makes it much more easier for me to be able to do things. This is another Sony A6400. This is the mainstream cam, but it has a Sigma. I mean, I mean, excuse me, a Tamron 17 to 70. It's a little bit, a little bit dusty. Tamron 70 to 70 lens, um, two Elgato key light airs is what makes things look good on the stream. I picked these up off Etsy somewhere. I can't remember. If anybody's interested, let me know in the comments and I'll link these in the description. I'll find them off my Etsy, Etsy uh, profile. Mashallah, they were done very well. <clears throat> this is my main gaming monitor. Uh, this is the um, Samsung G7, Samsung G7, 32 inch, uh, 1440p resolution. And uh, most gamers I know like to use 27 inch screens, but me being a little bit older than your average gamer, I need more real estate to be able to see what I'm doing. And I actually love this screen. It is on a floating, as you can see, it's on a, on a, on a, uh, on a monitor stand, so it floats. So there's nothing up under it, but I'm also able to, as you can see, I'm able to move it. So when I want the screen to be a bit closer, I can move it like this, and then I can just push it back against the wall and get it out of my way. So that is the main gaming monitor. Keyboard I use, the peripheral I use is the Razer Huntsman Elite. I like the Elite because I like having all these extra buttons to be able to do things and up and down volume and play and pause and all that. I also have a gaming Razer Huntsman Mini that I use as a gaming keyboard when I use keyboard and mouse, which is not very often because I am, yes, I am a controller player. I am a controller player. This is the Scuf Impact. I use the scuff impact with the um, digital triggers. So I use a scuff impact with the digital triggers, instant taps, and the bottom paddles. And the bottom paddles that it can be so I don't have to take my hands off of the sticks. I am a gamer control I am a controller gamer. R mouse is a Razer uh, Basilisk V2 wired. And just a Razer. This is also a Razer mouse pad. It's a hard mouse pad. I like this. It's very flow. It flows very easily. 
Now, I also use the Stream Deck XL. This is the Stream Deck XL that is attached to the Stream PC, which we'll get to in a moment. And that is the Stream Deck, normal Stream Deck that is attached to my gaming PC. As you see, I can uh, mute and unmute Discord. Some of these buttons are not showing very well. Uh, I can mute and unmute myself in Discord and other things. <clears throat> now for audio. For audio, I use for the stream room. For the podcast, I use a Shure SM7B. But for the streams, I use this beautiful, it's upside down, I know, this, this beautiful Aston Spirit mic. This mic has a rich, warm sound that I just, I, I really, really like it. And Aston knocked it out of the park with this one. It's beautiful. It's rugged because a lot of times I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm moving. I move this back. It's on a, um, a blue compass uh mic stand so a lot of times i'm grabbing and moving this and this is just made very well it's very sturdy and well made so that i can able i'm able to move it around however i like to do so <clears throat> now the cream of the crop two pcs and i've had so many people ask me brother yusha why do you have two pcs why do you need two pcs we'll explain this right now this pc is my ga main gaming pc and i built these two pcs during the pandemic it was probably about six to eight months from the first initial very small PC that I had um, trying to stream end game on it to this setup that we have here, which works, alhamdulillah, flawlessly most of the time. This is my main gaming PC. This is the PC that is connected into this monitor and into this monitor. So this is the main gaming PC. It has a um, MSI Meg Ace motherboard, a very good motherboard with a Ryzen 9 5950X uh, CPU and a GeoForce RTX 3080 Founders Edition um, is, the, is the main CPU GPU, of course, with the uh, <clears throat> 64 gigabytes of DDR4, 3600 uh, BDI Samsung RAM uh, is in that. That's the Trident, uh, that's the G Skill Trident Z Neo, a very good RAM. But if you're doing gaming, make sure you get the BDI RAM. I think it's 16 by 36 by 16, I believe it is. Uh, but BDI RAM is easier to be tuned. Peripherals are all the, pretty much Lian Lee case. This is a Lian Lee Dynamic 011, uh, 011 Dynamic XL. This is the XL, the ROG certified version. Got a bunch of Lian Lee Unifans in there, which I really like the aesthetic of the Lian Lee Unifans, plus the quiet nature of them. Um, so this is also with an NZXT uh, Kraken Z, I think it's a Z63, uh, I believe it is. Z73, whichever one is the 360, 360 uh, millimeter AIO. It keeps everything nice and cool. I also have a nice little mini screen in here that I put in here. This is just a little normal HDMI screen. I got a little dust I need to clean in the PC back there, but what this does is this gives me my GPU stats, GPU uh, um, uh, core clock, uh, the GPU watt power that is pulling, temperature, fan speed, this is RAM, this is how much RAM is being used, and this is my CPU processor, uh, core clock, heat, all of that. So that gives me, uh, instantly I can look over and see the stats on my CPU, GPU, and RAM and how they're being used. <clears throat> that is the main gaming PC, that is where I do all the gaming, this is where uh, everything goes down, this is the main, main screen. Now, this PC here is a small PC that is designed just for the stream. This PC is connected to this screen by itself. And as you can see, this is Streamlabs OBS. This is how the stream looks when I am on stream. Um, so this is connected into that. The reason why I have a second PC and the stream PC is because one, when you're trying to game and stream, if I was just streaming, it was just talking, this would be enough. But when you start adding a game to that, the stream uses... CPU and GPU. It uses CPU and GPU. And if you are using uh, NVENC encoding, which is GPU encoding to the stream, it will use uh, about 20% of this GPU, to, uh, maybe more. Then you have a game who wants to use the other 80 to sometimes 100% of this GPU. Therefore, you create a bottleneck. And this is why the streams glitch out sometimes. This is why streams buffer and streams twitch and games go down. Because you're trying to both stream and game off of the same CPU, GPU. When you create a two stream PC or two PC stream, what you do is you separate the gaming from the streaming. 
Now this streaming PC, the only thing it has to worry about is encoding the stream. So the CPU and GPU are stream encoding. This um, is some of the leftovers that I had from the original gaming and streaming PC before I upgraded to this one. So this one has the MSI Gaming Carbon uh, motherboard. It has a Ryzen 9 3950X and a uh, MSI RTX 2070 Super, along with 32 gigabytes of the same G-Skill Trident Z Neo BDIE RAM and the same NZXT, but I think this is the, um, the, the, the smaller version. I can't remember the name of this one. It's the Z63, I think that's the Z73. But this one is the smaller AIO that has a 280 millimeter <clears throat> uh, AIO with the bigger fans. So I have to use two of the bigger fans in this one. The same type of case, it is a Lian Li O11 Mini. O11 Mini with the same Lian Li fans, top, bottom, side, and back. Uh, so it's a very powerful little stream PC. It actually uses as a gaming PC, but it runs the stream flawlessly. So then even if something were to happen and I were to be gaming and my gaming PC were to crash, my stream will not go down. I don't lose the stream. If this one crashes, I lose the stream. <clears throat> but the fact that it is only running the stream takes very minimal processing power off of a 2070 Super and a 3950X. So the stream, alhamdulillah, runs flawlessly. And so the, that, the way that you connect these, and I don't want to, this is just a stream tour, so I'm not going to go very deep into the details. But basically, there is an HDMI out on this GPU <clears throat> that I'm running into. Let me see if you can see it. There you go, right there. This Elgato, right there, Elgato capture card. So I have an HDMI running from there into this Elgato capture card, which then becomes a source. So this whole PC, anything that this screen sees, then becomes a source in OBS for the stream PC. Simple as that. It becomes a source. All I have to do is clone this in NVIDIA control panel. I clone, I clone this PC to that output, and it becomes a source in OBS. And then audio is routed out into this, from this to that, and from that to this, so it all works together. It's a very complicated process. If anybody wanted me to run down exactly how to set up a two PC stream, uh, just let me know in the comments down below. Just let me know in the comments. This is my little metric that always on my stream shows the weather details. It is a blustery, blustery, chilly, negative nine degrees Celsius today, and that is true. But it also does a bunch of other things. It has a time, countdown timer, uh, YouTube subscriber count, which is at 22.5K. You guys can help me push that all the way to 100. Drop a sub. If you're not a sub, drop a sub right now. Um, also, that's an error. I don't know. We'll see. But there's so many things you can add to this little metric. I kind of like it. Uh, I got it for now. When it comes to my own personal audio, I use the, here they are over here, Steel Series. These are my headphones. These are the Steel Series Artis Pro Wireless. True wireless, lossless wireless because it all routes through this little box. And, and this is the little box that controls. It always has a spare battery in the side here, so the battery never dies. I don't have to worry about plugging it in. All of my audio is routed into this bad boy, the Go XLR. I have the mini. A lot of streamers use the big Go XLR because it gives you a soundboard and you can uh, uh, change these, but this actually works perfect for me for everything that I need, and it does exactly what I need to do. <clears throat> so I have four sliders. This is my mic volume. I can turn it up and down. This is the chat volume for Discord, so I can turn up and down my Discord chat and how they sound. This is when we play, um, <clears throat> uh, what is that thing called? Spotify, we play Muslim Bilal stuff before stream, so I can control the volume of Spotify right there. And this is the overall system volume. And now if you see, um, if I unmute this and start talking, you'll see that it moves. So those bars move up and down, so I know what's working and what's not working. And I can easily just click down there and mute it. This Go XLR Mini is connected to this PC, and then it, all the audio is routed out to here so that it goes to the stream. Super simple process. For the, for the stream PC, I have just a little Logitech so I can type in the, the title of the new stream, a little mouse here, just an old school Razer Balisk, Bal Basilisk. I probably pronounced that terribly. Hyperspeed. And that controls the stream PC up there. <clears throat> this is it. This is my vantage point. This is... This is um, the little lab that I created, I find this a very beautiful space. These are nano leaf panels on the wall. I can change the colors of them. I can change the, the pattern, the brightness. This is a beautiful MGL 
wall applique um, that we ordered at the very beginning and it's been there ever since, mashallah. Um, both of my PCs are connected through Ethernet. This is connected to Ethernet, this connected to Ethernet, but the rest of my house, I live in a family full of gamers. All my kids are gamers, so they get the Wi-Fi. <laughs> they get the Wi-Fi, but we do have a mesh system where they're connected through Ethernet, but it's still passed over Wi-Fi signal. And for that Wi-Fi signal, we're using this the, the ROG GT, I think it's GTXE 1100, something like that. This is a pretty powerful Wi-Fi router. It sends Wi-Fi. We have three floors in the house, so it sends Wi-Fi all through the house. This is a little... Uh, this is just a little award that I was given in Dubai uh, many years ago for, for service and da'wah. Walhamdulillah. Uh, so may Allah accept that, inshallah. Uh, I got the little hub. We, this is what we need more of. We need some more love. We need more love. Uh, I picked this up from Nominal uh, in one of their, I think, sales. So I picked this up from Nominal. Uh, just, I like this back here because we need love. We need love. We need love. So that is that is that is the stream setup. Um if for some reason I really want to hear really good spatial audio, I have, these are my backup set of headphones. These are um, Bayer Dynamics uh, DT770 Pro, 80 ohms. They have the, the, the much more expensive ones that are opened, open, uh, open cups, but I don't like the open cups because sometimes when you have a sensitive microphone like that, it can bleed, it can bleed right out into it. Now, both of these cameras, this camera and this camera, both of them are connected to the stream PC because they need that in order to capture source. And I'm able to just easily, like as you can see right now, we're on the starting screen. If I wanna switch over to let's say just camera two, boom, push a button. And there you see, this is that camera that you were looking at back there. And then boom, I switch it and it automatically goes back to the starting. So that's how we change scenes. Everything is right here built in. I can send messages in my YouTube chat just to put them up there, links, whatnot. So this is, this is my stream setup. I'm gonna to try to put the links for everything I have and what I use in um, in the description. Any questions about the stream setup, any questions that you might have, just let a brother know. I love this mic. Anybody that's interested in getting a mic that has, wants very warm sound, now the Shure SM7B is always gonna be a winner. But this mic right here, there's just something very beautiful and warm sounding about this Aston Spirit mic that I like. Uh, I like the rigid, I like the construction. I like the way that it's made. Uh, these are all made in the United Kingdom. And then as you see, it's a very small room. So I can just whip over here and um, boom, right there's my editing lab. This is a little fan for the for the summer when it gets a little bit warmer, but it's not a, it's, it's not a large space, but this is my space. This is my creative space. This is a space where I get to be in my creative mode. This is where all the streams go down. This is where I create YouTube content. This is where we do the counseling sessions. This is where everything gets edited right over there. Um, so that's it. That, that, that's the stream setup. That is the whole, that is the whole thing to it. Now, as I said, as a bonus, for those of you who don't know, I mentioned many, many times, but if this is your first time that a few years ago before StockX came on the scene and kind of blew up the resale market, I used to be into buying and selling sneakers, especially Jordans and Ultra Boost, et cetera. And um, that used to be a side business for me and it was extremely lucrative back in the day when uh, resellers were still a big thing. I had access to a Jordan brand account where I was able to order um, as, many, as many of new releases as I wanted at, at wholesale cost, at what retailers buy there for. And I would then resell those <clears throat> at cost, at, at uh, retail cost to um, some suppliers that I knew. Uh, some here in Minneapolis, some in, in, in other stores and in Vegas and a couple other shops that I had some relations with relationships with. And then they would add a markup on top of that because back then every Jordan sold out. Like it was hard to get anything. I think it's still the same today, but you know, Jordans sell out and you have to go on StockX or eBay and, and buy them. So I was able to make a, a profit off of that and it was a very good business until StockX came along and crashed it. But I said I would give some bonus content and show you guys what I have left over after we got out of the business. Oh, this is also my little fridge. Um, got my little drinks and stuff in here. Um, so this is a little fridge right outside my stream room, my little cat area. This is where my cat eats, it's a mess. But this is my, um, this is it, this is the shoe wall. This, this is the shoe wall. And uh, these are ones that either, when I got out of the business, I couldn't sell them because maybe I 
didn't have the original box for them anymore or I'd already worn them and they were too worn to be sold or there was some sentimental value, sentimental value to them. When we decided to set up the Streamlab, I did sell off all of my old Jordans that I had been holding on to for a rainy day. That rainy day stash, I sold those off because that was how I was able to buy the stream setup. Uh, and that's how, you know, business goes. You got to learn to do business if and, and learn to save and learn to have assets and learn to have things that you can liquidate. That's just, as you get older, you, you, you learn that, you learn those things. But there are some Jordans in here I'm still very fond of. Some of them I can't even wear anymore. Like these are one of my favorites uh, that came out, but as you can see, they're starting to come apart because they're a bit old. I need to re-glue those if I wanted to wear them. The same thing with these. These are from 2003. These are, and as you can see, the, the soles started separating. Those need to be fixed. This is another one of my favorites I've had for a very long time. This is from 1996. As you can see, it started yellow. It used to be white patent leather, but it yellows over time. So these are some Columbias that I've had since 19, 1996. And they smell like 1996. Uh, Couple more of my favorites here. You got the DB6s. DB6 is one of my all time top favorite DBs. Um, I think I have them somewhere. I have another 1996 gym here. These are the original. Um, we used to call these the playoffs. These weren't called the breads until later on. And as time has gone on, they've even stopped turning red. They've turned a little, little orangey. But these are directly from 1996. And these are still wearable. I still wear these. From time to time, so that's it. This is the, this is this is the uh, this is the shoe stash, and uh, we have another pair here. These are some, one of my favorite twelves, the taxi twelves. But I need to fix these as well. As you can see, they've started to separate. I need to fix them. That's what happens over time. The glue comes undone, and they start to separate. But um, maybe I'll get these fixed. If not, maybe they'll re-release the taxis. But this is it. This is, uh, this is my little shoe area. I don't allow myself to have anything that won't fit in here. And once I wear these out and I replace them with something else, but these are just the ones I couldn't sell at the time. And there's a custom one up there that's denim. It's made out of denim. Used to have some custom connection um, with a guy out in California that used to make customs for customers. So that's it. That's the shoe collection. You've seen this tour room. Which one is your favorite out of these? I also have some Ultra Boost in here. I used to have a lot more Ultra Boost, um, but I like I like wearing Ultra Boost. Ultra Boost are very comfortable. These are the original, not Ultra Boost, but these are uh, uh, um, some of the originals that came out with this drop for for Adidas, and I I really like these as well. I really like that. That's the very original ones. Nobody wanted to, to buy these when they first came out, and all of a sudden everybody wants them everybody wants them but that's it that's the whole the whole room the whole tour the whole shebang tell me what pair is your favorite pair out of here and what do you like most about the stream room people have asked me so many times to do a stream room setup here you go this is as detailed of a stream room setup i'm gonna give you oh and this stuff smells amazing i don't know who makes it I pick it up at a local place where uh, um, I pick up some cat supplies. This sandalwood, this stuff smells beautiful. And it stays right here. Oh, this table, by the way. A lot of people have asked about my table. I built this table. This table is actually a countertop from Home Depot. Uh, and there's my glass chair mat. So I use a glass chair mat um, so that my chair can slide. And then, of course, that is the foot pedal for Discord. If you are a streamer, you need this because if two streamers are streaming together and they're both talking on top of each other, it's very disrespectful. So you get this and this becomes your push to talk. You can actually push on that pedal when you want to talk and lift off of it and mute you. So it's very important for streamers to have. But I bought this from Home Depot. This is actually a countertop. This is a birch wood countertop. Um, I bought the, I think it's six foot, six foot length or seven foot length countertop and then just added these legs to it. So this is actually a birchwood countertop that is super sturdy. My, my entire family can get on this and it wouldn't go down. And now the most important thing is cable management. You see that one cable going there because that's my controller cable and you see one cable going to my lights. Um, cable management. All of this and you all don't see any cables. Now you might see one or two in there, but no cables. 
So where are the cables they're hiding? Oh, these I got off of Amazon. If anybody wants a link, let me know. Just little strip lights that you can use with a remote control. There's two of them behind there. There's one of them there. And then those little lights down there, there's one there. There's one there. There's another one back there. And those are by a phone app so they can give a little, little ambiance to the room. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. That is the stream room. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out and assalamu alaikum.